Uh, coaches, start a general uh, thought or statement on tonight's game. Well, it, it, it was a um, it was a hard fall game. Um, our, our guys uh, never never uh, gave in, never quit. We were uh, we were in a nip and tuck battle through the first half. Um, East Kentucky's got a really really good team, really good team, and um, we got down. We could have laid down, and we didn't. We were able to take the lead. Um, I think at 59, 58, and then uh, with a minute 40, we're up. We're up one, um, and then we had a, we had an opportunity to take the lead again late, and and, and couldn't couldn't um, couldn't get a shot on the rim um, in the last minute, 40 seconds to uh, uh, give us a chance to win. Uh, we had had a lot of opportunities. Kids fought. They they uh, were resilient. Um, Statistically, you know, we 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 uh, did what we could defensively to um, to hold them under wraps. Uh, felt like we 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 guarded as uh, well. Our, our our zone was was really effective for us. Got us back in the game. Uh, you know, we had our opportunities rebounding the ball. We did all the things statistically we had to do to win the game. Uh, it's been the it's been the, the last minute and forty seconds has been a microcosm of of, of um, this 2021 season, uh, we've had, um, uh, so many games that has been right there with us having a lead or, or, or whatever with, with under three to play. And we've not been able to close out the deal. All right. So the questions, we'll go to Blaine first. Go ahead, Blaine. Coach figure. I was just curious, what was the conversation with Terry Taylor like, uh, in the locker room after the game, knowing that that was his last one? I mean, it, it, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not good at farewell speeches because it isn't farewell. It's just the next chapter in his life. Um, he'll have a, a, a lifelong advocate in me, um, forever. Uh, he's done everything I've asked. I, this, this season did not go the way, uh, I'm sure that, that any of us wanted, um, you know, I, I, I take full responsibility for uh, the shortcomings of this team. Uh, just, you know, uh, I, I hate to see uh, it come to an end uh, like this in, in a heartbreaking loss. Uh, but with that being said, he's going to be a very successful human being, not only a player, but a human being. No matter what happens to that kid, he will, he will find success. Let's go to Alex next. Go ahead, Alex. Coach, to kind of bounce off of what um, Blaine said, can you just talk about really the impact that Terry's made, you know, not just on this program, but really just, you know, the university and really just the, the OBC as a whole, you know, both as a basketball player and the man that he is? Yeah, I, I, I think um, um, he is the, the ultimate uh, persona of, of what a student athlete should look like. Uh, carries himself – in a, in a manner uh, of not only being uh, a great human being, uh, community service, um, academically, you know, then, then on the, the things he does on the court athletically. And, you know, this was, this was a kid who wasn't a highly sought after prospect coming out of high school. And so he was able um, to show that if you, if you dedicate yourself and you believe in yourself and you work extremely hard, uh, there's great things that that can happen for you as a person, and, and um, you know he should symbolize what student student athletes should all strive to be. Let's go back. Another question from Blaine. Coach Figure, uh, when mentioning that you know the, the the way that this season went was was on your behalf, uh, I'm kind of curious about scheduling. You know, obviously scheduling was a whole thing in of itself, just changing opponents and things like that. But, you know, last year, scheduling a lot of Power 5 opponents, and that obviously translated into playing in big games in the tournament. How do you feel like your team adapted to the schedule that you had this year um, to be able to play in this game? Well, I, you know, I, I think uh, some of those games, if it was normal, um, you know, some of those, those, those games early uh, against Power 5 schools prepare you for – some of these things that happen here, um, you know, I, I, 
we left a lot of games on the table. We left a lot of games that could have went either way, and 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 it, it never went in our direction. Whether it be you know um, miss shot, turnover, whatever, whatever it might be, you know our um, um, our lack of 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 you know closing out things um, what was was what you know, kind of kept us to where we're at right now. And, and, you know, I, I don't, I don't know about, about all the scheduling things, you know, um, as far as, as, as did it prepare us or, or, or whatnot. I just know we were in a lot of close games um, that could have went either way. And um, they, 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 they didn't go our way. You can ask your follow-up question, Blaine, go ahead. Yeah, sure thing. So, you know, last time we talked, you mentioned that you guys are primarily a sophomore-led team, um, potentially bringing back three starters next year. But, I mean, whenever you talk about leaving games on the table and stuff like that, do you uh, claim it more to inconsistency or do you claim it more to your youth? Uh, I, I think uh, youth youth plays a, a big factor in it, I, but I do also think inconsistency plays a big factor in it. Um you know, we um, it, it, the the common denominator in all the losses, if you look at and you can go look at all the stat sheets, or whatever, uh, is is we just didn't make enough perimeter shots um, from the three point line, and and every loss we we were like tonight, three of seventeen, four of twenty two, five of twenty five, um, all those losses is because we, we weren't able to make uh, uh, perimeter jump shots at the at the end, and and so. Um, that became an Achilles heel for us. And, that, and, and, and so in those situations late in the game, you know, you, you throw Terry the ball and everybody drops down on him. Uh, we've got to be able to make uh, perimeter jump shots. And, and uh, in the games we lost this year, we didn't do it. Let's go back to Alex. Coach, you talk about the really the youth of this team overall. Can you just talk about the potential that you see in this team heading into next year, you know, re returning – basically, you know, four out of five starters? Yeah, I, I mean, we've got a chance to, to continue to, to grow and build this program. You know, obviously, uh, you're not replacing a guy like like Terry. Um, that That's impossible. I don't care any coach in America who has a guy that for back-to-back -back years averages a double-double for you and, and, and um, you know, is your, uh, your leader. Uh, you know, he's good. that's going to be a hard uh, void to fill. And, um, you know, I hate to say that, you know, losing him, uh, that, that, that's, um, I joke with him unless he wants to come back and try this again. I, I, um, uh, I love the kid to death, but yeah, we've got, we've got, um, we've got an opportunity to grow as a team, to get better, to mature. Um, you know, these kids now that, that are all sophomores have been through a whole season. Um, you know, we've got to get healthy. Um, and, 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 and we've got to add some, some more, uh, pieces to the puzzle. Let's do one more for coach and then Terry's going to join us. So go ahead, Blaine. Yeah. You know, obviously it's a little early to look at something like this, but you, you mentioned that you're going to have a void to fill with Terry, uh, with a healthy Jordan Adams and, you know, Mike Peake potentially coming back. I mean, do you think this team is going to have more of a post presence with him? Uh, how do you think you might have to make adjustments offensively going forward? No, oh, I, I haven't even thought about that yet. I mean, um, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I, that's I, – I'm trying to just to come to the grip that I'm not, I don't get to coach Terry Taylor anymore. Um, so that, I, that, that will sink in at some point in time. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll look at that down the road. But right now I'm just, you know, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sad for – um, a, a young man that that has given his his um, his his whole being to this university and believing in me uh, from day one. Coach, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. Thanks, for having me, Coach. All right, hold on. We'll have Terry here in just one sec. Oh. 
All right, Terry, and uh, just any, can you put in the word just about the, this game tonight and, and what happened out there? Uh, you know, coach told us from the get go that it wasn't going to be easy. And we, we kind of knew that. And, um, <clears throat> you know, they were going to make runs and we were going to make runs. And, you know, we talked about us doing the little things like communicating and getting box outs and, just doing all the little things that we haven't done all year just for this tournament run we were trying to make. And, you know, we didn't make enough of them, you know, down the stretch, you know, missed box outs, you know, uh, not communicating and letting Wendell Green get open threes or Cooper Rob get open threes. And, um, you know, that's just, that just goes back to, you know, early in the year, you know, um, you know, but I just hope, you know, it's over now. And I just hope my younger teammates or former teammates now, I hope they learn from it and just, you know, try to play for each other and not let the hurt, like, feel this way that I felt. So that's about it. That's, well, let's go to some questions. Uh, Alex, you're up first. Hey, Terry. Um, so I know, you know, the outcome of the game wasn't what you expect. But at the same time, you know, after tonight, or really just throughout your entire career at Austin P, you know, you've been, you've had, you own just about every single accolade at Austin P, you know, first in all time scoring, third in the OVC in scoring. Can you just talk about what it means to cap off really one of the most successful careers in OVC history? Um, you know, I just got to thank God, you know, first, cause he put me in this place, you know, without him, I wouldn't even have, I wouldn't have the ability to go out there and do what I did. And then second, my teammates and coaches, they just believed in me since day one. And, you know, I can't, I can't release. Really, I did put in the work, but you know them just instilling the confidence in me to go make plays and you know go out there and just do what I do. You know that really means a lot, and you know I'm forever grateful for every teammate that I've had and all my coaches that I didn't had, and you know they made they made me a better player and a better person. So you know, you know, shout out to God and them. None of it would been possible without none of them. Let's go next to uh, Blaine. Yeah, Terry, um, on that last play there, a chance to tie the game, send it into overtime. Was it disappointing not getting that final opportunity on the last possession uh, to send the game into an extra period? Uh, Yeah, I mean, but, you know, coach draws up a play and, you know, I'm a team guy first. So, you know, I'm not really tripping about, you know, not getting the last shot or when, you know, first Reggie had just hit a big shot. So he wanted us to flare Reggie and throw it to Reggie. And if not, hand off to Jordan and, you know, Jordan can pitch it back to me or Jordan can take the shot. And, you know, you know, the outcome, it got a little sloppy at the end, like with the play, but, you know, it happened. And, you know, I wish the outcome was different, but, you know, things happen for a reason. I can't change them. So um, it is what it is, but, you know, we gave it our all. And that's all I could ask for, you know, they didn't quit. They didn't give up, you know, they stuck with me even in the huddles. You know, when stuff got tight and they was hitting shots and we were missing, you know, we dug in deep. So, you know, it is what it is. But that just goes back to the end of the, the all the plays from before. You know, we could have prevented ourselves from being in that position and maybe put them in that position if we stopped, if we did what we were supposed to do. So I can't really be hung up about a last shot if we didn't do what we did in the beginning. Blaine, go, go. Go ahead with your follow-up question. Yeah, so, I mean, it's hard to look back at a whole season like like this one, but, I mean, just recapping this final season as a whole, I mean, it, is it tough to swallow the, um, I don't want to say missed expectations, but, I mean. Uh, you know, that's, I mean, that's kind of, I mean, it kind of is hard, but, you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, we still went out there and played and, you know, try to give our best no matter what. You know, expect, expectations are what they are. You know, people expect you to do this, but some things just don't happen that way. And, you know, certain people answer and some people don't. And, you know, we just didn't happen to Wisconsin. But, I mean, we got to play our season. So, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I was – I'm more happy that I got to play my senior year than anything. You know, it didn't happen how I wanted it to, you know, cutting down the nets on Saturday. But – you know, I got to play my senior year and I was healthy for the whole year. So, you know, that's a blessing in itself. So, you know, 
next year I just hope they don't pay attention to all the expectations. Like I don't, uh, I've never paid attention to them like for a sophomore slump or can he repeat or can he do this again? You know, you just gotta go out there and go to work and not pay attention to it. Cause people are gonna say what they wanna say, but at the end of the day, you gotta go out there and work and just be you. So it, as I've been saying, it is what it is. Let's go, let's go to Colby next. Terry, um, I know this is uh, fresh and raw and maybe not something that you've even taken the time to reflect on right now, but what will you take away from your experience as a governor? Um, you know, when I first got here, I was 17 and, you know, I didn't really know much about college basketball or just, you know, coach fig at that, but, you know, or Austin, or Austin P for real. I mean, I knew of it, but not really. But the more I got here, the more I like loved it. And like, I just want to stay here and just, you know, build something with Coach Fig because, you know, the fans are great. You know, the people around here are great. And, you know, Austin P is like a second home to me. Like people always ask, why don't you never go home? Because, I mean, I'm kind of already home at Austin P. So, uh, you know, they just they just welcome me with open arms. And, you know, I'm forever grateful to even, you know, have that opportunity to come in and, you know, try to change a culture and try to like help the younger guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, that was my main focus this year. Like, even if I didn't win player of the year or anything else, you know, my main focus was to be a leader and try to bring the younger guys along. Cause I knew it was going to be a weird, but difficult season. So, you know, I'm forever grateful for my time in Clarksville at Austin P. you know, it made me who I am. It made me more grateful, you know, it made me hungrier to play the game because, you know, people look down at Austin P, and, you know, it just makes you want to go out there and prove them wrong. So, you know, Austin P forever uh, has my heart and I'm forever a go. Terry, I think that's a good way to end it. Thanks for your time and congratulations on a tremendous career. Hey, man, thank you all for everything. I appreciate you all.